Hello, this is Bini here. Today, I'm going to talk about indexes, especially in the NASDAQ. For example, if you take a look at my screen, today is a bad day. I mean, the market is really dropping. Sick, all right, like me, sick right now. If you take a look at Nikkei 225, it dropped about 12 plus percent, 4,000 plus point in just a single day. And this is the largest drop ever we've seen in the past 10 years. The last time that it dropped like that was about October 2008. All right, and it dropped about 11 plus percent. Uh, then we have NASDAQ dropping about 5 plus percent, STI about 6 percent, and of course we have crypto, which is the Bitcoin and Ethereum dropping about 10 to 15 percent respectively as of my last view. All right, the question would be, is this the start of a correction, which I think that you'll be interested to know. I'm just going to continue from my previous video of what I did in NASDAQ, all right, to talk about whether this is the start of a correction and what you can do potentially to hatch into a huge drop. Uh, what I did previously was to talk about that if each of this correction previously, for example, this was a correction that happens during August 2023, and then this was another correction that happens during the March to May 2024. So if each of this correction is indicative, all right, meaning that, for example, previously it's uh, moved down by about 8.5%, and then this one about 12%, right? and they start to rebound. If these are indicative, then these are a reference for people to pick up, you know, NASDAQ. Then what is happening right now is that NASDAQ has far exceeded the 12% maximum correction that we've seen during this period of time, which is from 2023 to now. Okay, so uh, with this, I think that somehow uh, with today's movement here, that means that today's movement of uh, dropping about 17%. So this sort of give us a clue that we might be looking at even a lot more correction of NASDAQ to come. Even though right now NASDAQ is near to a support level, so that's a historical support level here. But the fact is that uh, with the market dropping and if it can close uh, below that 12% uh, drop. So where is that 12% drop? So if I just uh, do a bit of a simulation here. So this was that 12% drop, right? That happened uh, last Friday, right? It managed to drop like and be contained within that 12%. But, you know, as of today, all right, it's went out to do the more than 12%. So this is not good. I think that as long as the prices, it doesn't move back above to above this uh, 18,500 level, then I think that uh, it's sort of firm up that this is not a minor correction. It's we should be looking at something a little bit more substantial. Now, so going forward, right, if you take a look at the whole movement of NASDAQ in the past, okay, so this was that huge down that we've saw uh, during the um, period where it was between 2021 to 2022, right? So this was about a correction all right, of about 37%. So if we just uh, simulate that, it can be a correction of, uh, let's say, 30%. So that's where it goes, which is about 30% here. That means that we still have about 15% uh, of drop for NASDAQ. And then this would set it in a close below the high that we've seen in 2021. And this was one of the key levels of NASDAQ when it broke through here. All right, so when NASDAQ gets into this level, which is about, uh, you know, near to 15,000 level here, if ever it corrected 30% based on what we've seen earlier, then it means that those people who bought into NASDAQ here, then they will be losing money. Okay, so I think that we might have a slightly uh, bad, uh, correction if ever that the support level of 16,800 uh, is broken. Okay, so I hope that we don't see 16,800 in the near term. Investors, if you want to know how to hedge a position, because then as I said, right, on Friday, last Friday, we have not seen this drop and it was over night, that means the Asian trading zone, that we start to see a drop in uh, NASDAQ. So what can you do to hedge into your position when right now the Asian zone is still trading? Right, to hatch into your assistant position if you are exposed to the NASDAQ but yet you are now trading into the Asia zone, right, one of the ways is to use warrants. So go to warrants.com.sg, under the warrant selector, then you click on the select underline, scroll down to look for NDX because this is symbol for NASDAQ. 
All right, if you are looking at future being bearish, then choose a put warrant. So this is where you see the two put warrants coming up. I will usually be looking at the warrants with a fire symbol and as well as those which are a bit further dated warrants. The other way is to use a DLC and that's a daily leverage certificate. So right now I'm at the DLCSortGen.com webpage. Same thing, choose the underlying, which is your the NASDAQ. Okay, NASDAQ 100 and then search her because it, when we are looking at the market right now is a little bit uh, bearish. So if you want to, let's say, take a bearish stand, then you choose the daily shock, right? So this would let you profit if the underlying price is to move down. Okay, so I'm just going to search for a daily shock. So here we go. We have so many um, NASDAQ uh, DLCs. So they range from a seven times and a five times uh, daily shot. So which one will I be looking at? I'll be looking at the one that it, that are more sensitive. That means the one that has a star here. Right? I'll be looking at the sensitivity because the sensitivity would tell me that for every 22 points movement in NASDAQ, then it will move a tick in the DLCs. So for example, as NASDAQ starts to fall, right, you see the DLC is actually gain in value right now so just today from a friday close the dlc's had already gained about average 30 plus percent so this will allows you to tap into tools which uh, you can do that in the asia zone without waiting for the u.s uh, market to open and then this allows you to hatch into your existing nasdaq position going back into nasdaq chart maybe you ask me where would be some resistance level i would think that i want to keep note into this region here so this would be the region of a previous low so this is a previous low point here so that's a low point and then this is a high point right if nasdaq should retrace back up here towards the 18,400 to the 18,700 then this will be deemed as a very strong resistance level right for some bearishness to happen if ever nasdaq is being resisted here all forms of trading comes with risk please remember that whether you are using warrants or whether you're using dlc's or any form of instruments do evaluate carefully whether these instruments are suitable for you as i presented earlier in nasdaq i said that we need to look at how many percent that price has corrected now price has exceeded that corrective manner so i'm expecting potentially that nasdaq might correct further i might be wrong but it's good to stay tuned to the few levels I've highlighted and to watch for reactions. Now, if you would like me to cover into other markets, other indexes, do let me know. I'll be happy to talk about them. All right, and I'll see you in my next video. And remember to click the subscribe button.